podcast where we're all just we're all vessels of what we do in some way shape or form but at the end of the day where our clients are getting success um, as a doctor my patients improving health the number one thing when the people trust you is you give them hope back I feel like if there's more hope positivity in the world that will outshine darkness negativity everything like that so he always just said i'm always like who am i and he's always like well you're a you're a child of god you're a child of royalty and i was like and i always joke with them like well i think royalty would have a couple other zeros in their bank account but <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, and this is a super special podcast. First and foremost, coming to you live from the Venetian Resort, Las Vegas. Secondly, you've got David Meltzer, Lacey Book, and the amazing Dr. Paul Natoli, who is launching a brand new movement. Let's call it a movement that is sweeping the nation, and we're super honored to be a part of that. Thank you, Paul, for being with us. Thank you for having me. Let's start off with what is this passion of yours? What are you looking to do for the world? So the podcast and the movement is called Believe the Hope. So it's a play off the Believe the Hype, um, which mm -hmm. is actually came from a, a shirt from uh, one of you guys that yeah. I think Luke made. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of how to do this podcast. What should I call it? And that literally that shirt fell out of the closet and I picked <laughs> it up. And I was like, oh, that's a good name. So then I quickly was like going on available? domain names. Like, yeah. is a domain name uh, available? And of course it was. So I quickly got that um but we've talked a lot i mean you guys on interviews today we've talked a lot in the past we're we're all just we're all vessels of what we do in some way shape or form but at the end of the day where our clients are getting success um as a doctor my patients improving health the number one thing when the people trust you is you give them hope back mm -hmm. and i think in a world where negativity is um seems like negativity is what what gets attention it gets it's the loudest um, it's the loudest mm -hmm. it's you know, the fringes seem to be the loudest on social media the news etc where there's not a lot of and people feel maybe hopeless fed up frustrated because they're like i'm not doing this as a parent i'm not doing this as a provider i'm not doing this and i'm not making x amount as a business owner etc giving them that hope and understanding that you can utilize these stories and these um and these experiences that they may be in that situation and then it can show that there's people there's a way out of it mm. um i also didn't want it to be something where it was just like some clips for social media that's like oh i feel motivated for a day and then you don't uh don't go anywhere with it mm -hmm. um so it will definitely be more conversation more relation um relationships more um stories of how they went from rock bottom to mm -hmm. quote unquote climbing the ladder in every aspect of that. But yeah. I feel like if there's more hope, positivity in the world, that will outshine darkness, negativity, everything like that. So. Love it. I love the idea of, of hope, and I think hope is different for every single person depending on what they're looking for in their life. But truly providing people hope is providing them the opportunity to see what can be, yes. what's possible. Yes. Um, so how do you think that that translates through the communication, the message that you're going to be giving? I think like you said, you said it's the opportunity. It gives them the permission that's already inside them. It gives them permission that they can step through the door even if they don't know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm here today because I literally gave myself permission when I was going to the Abundance and Overflow Nashville. I was literally driving the seven hours and I said, if an opportunity comes, uh, take it. And I didn't know what that looked like. And then you're like, oh, by the way, we're doing this podcast. And I was like, I go, oh, okay, God, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a sign that you need to stop um, holding myself back and giving myself permission and opportunity to step to the door and share this message. Um, my, one of my spiritual coaches, Brian Hall, who you guys know very well, he always just said, I'm always like, who am I? And he's always like, well, you're a, you're a child of God. You're a child of royalty. And I was like, and I always joke with him. I'm like, well, I think royalty would have a couple of their zeros in their bank account. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, but he's like, because he's like, if you're not going to do it, someone, God's going to have someone else step through that door and do it for him. Because, um, mm -hmm. and you gave the analogy about 
abundance and overflow or of how the guy's drowning and God sends him three boats and he's like, why didn't you save yeah. me? And then, <laughs> and then he's like, I sent you three boats. So <laughs> you're gonna, if you don't step through those doors, you don't have that hope and that opportunity to give yourself permission to walk through mm -hmm. those uncertainties um, when you're in a dark time or even when you're in a maybe uncertain time. Um, I think hope Power. gives that permission to people now. Permission is powerful. And it's interesting that you believe in hope um, and I always say one particle of light overcomes a million particles of darkness. When I see, hear, think, feel, and believe the content that I see, because the loudest uh, and the angriest and the most seen is the darkness. And it's in understanding the power of the light. And the light includes uh, intention. Mm. So I like you, you're bringing attention to, to hope. Uh, for me, which is there's something bigger than me that loves, promotes, protects me more than my mom. Mm -hmm. It's a simple way to describe a light. And a lot of people aren't seeking light, and that stops them from sharing their light. Mm. And so to seek light, you have to believe in it, mm -hmm. right? You believe in the hope that's believing in light, but you have to actually, like you just finished up with the last answer, you got to do it. Yeah. Right? It's like the, you know, I, no, it's wait, a, a, a boat, a plane, and a helicopter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Three yeah. boats would have been good too. Yeah. But, you know, what, what are you doing? What are you saying? Mm. What are you thinking? And what are you feeling that support the belief of it? And so you actually doing the podcast. Um, and when you said to me, you know, Brian Hall said, you know, if I was royalty, then why don't I have more zeros in my bank account? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Why don't you? It, you right. If, I, if I'm looking at you, it's like you are royalty. Why don't you? What are you doing to interfere with the zeros that you don't have in your bank account? Mm -hmm. Because what am I thinking, saying, doing, feeling, and believing that's not in alignment mm -hmm. with having all those zeros? Mm -hmm. And you'll find that belief is truly a reflection of what you're doing. That's why I tell people with perceived value. It's just a matter of comfort level and confidence. Yeah. Why can people charge more for less mm, right like we've all paid less for more and you're like geez man that guy's worked with me for a whole weekend for a hundred bucks and then other guys get a hundred thousand dollars to have lunch with you mm -hmm. why because they're confident and confident and articulating the conversation because they've done the work they do say think feel and believe it so this is a huge step for you and it was a calling when your shirt fell out all i could think about is looking over in my closet and seeing my dad's jacket mm -hmm. that he gave me and so when you're moving forward, more than a question, I think just constantly questioning yourself is what I'm doing today, what I'm thinking, feeling, believing, it, aligned with where I think I want to be or better. Mm -hmm. And that changed my feeling about light because I was one of those people, I was fighting darkness all the time. I was looking for darkness all the time and the most valuable relationships I had. And I still, as most human beings tend to be just today, like, there was a relationship that is actually full of tons of light. And I found myself looking at the darkness and scarcity, competition and comparison and unresolved. And then the minute I started looking for the light, it was like, oh, I just wasted a whole bunch of time, emotion and energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's um, that resistance of thinking you're not worthy enough to step through that door, too. Mm -hmm. um, and why, you know. I'm sure we all have those experiences. But life. if you're royalty, that, that should be yeah. an issue. It's already it's yours. Already, it's already well, yours. and I think that's the most important thing that, and I hope people capture that when you do your podcast, is that hope is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's all around you. Mm -hmm. It exists in every opportunity, every person, every individual. The question is, is can you give yourself permission to become the person that steps into that hope mm -hmm. to change things, right? And that's the action that David was talking about. Well, I love this, uh, and I love spending time doing this as we, through our conversations, are able to expose each other to different things. And today has been a, you, you are a chiropractor. It's been a very mm -hmm. chiropractic day. B.J. Palmer, who's the developer of chiropractic, his most famous quote yeah. is, you never know how something you may say, think, or do today may impact the lives of millions tomorrow it is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. Mm -hmm. It's the most famous quote. Mm 
mm-hmm. right? And I, I, I also too just want to share. Well, you die. <laughs> Are you him reincarnated? January 11th, 1968. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, honestly, I think I, if anyone I can pick to be reincarnated, it has to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I know. One of the things I, I, like, I, 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 I swear, what we, and we should look at this. I, I think Angelo Pizzo would love to make a movie about that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It would be amazing. It would be amazing. Fascinating. But what I love about your project, Paul, is that, you know, you've decided to, you know, step into that. What you what you personally may say, think or do by doing right. So doing mm-hmm. the podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, I hope that this podcast can even serve as one of your podcast episodes that it will make the library to share with your listeners Mm -hmm. um and i am i feel extremely blessed that we could leverage our platform to help to propagate that and also david's uh, platform to propagate and promote a movement i think that that is is super amazing um i want to get your perspective on kind of then your vision like this is kind of a pretty cool start if mm-hmm. you're going to use this as your initial run um where where do you see this podcast going uh, because i know you specifically told me i don't want this to be just for my local community yeah i want it to be a message of movement worldwide it, um but that's the beauty of technology and a podcast it can go anywhere um connections relationships also build off of that um yeah this this is a mission. This is a movement. This is something that I don't think can be small. I think it mm. has to be has to be large because in order to put that to shine that candle through the darkness instead of cursing it, um, I have to step into being that great, that royalty, and that opportunity. And it has to go world. It has to be big. It has to be. It has to be nonstop and. Um, stepping into these rooms, knowing people like Dave and you and Sean and Lacey here, um, gives me the opportunity to build those connections and relationships to do that. Um, and then I just have to have the faith in myself and the confidence in myself and to put in the work because nothing gets done. I mean, you can, you can say how awesome this is going to be, but if I, don't, if I don't do it or you don't put it in the work, you don't put in the work, <laughs> it doesn't get done. And that message doesn't, it gets squashed and it just fizzles out. Um, so I'm ready to to put in the work, I'm ready to build the relationships and the opportunity to go worldwide and go big and make this something, make it a movement, not just a podcast, but actually a movement. Well, it's going to be far greater than anything that you can imagine. That I absolutely know. And uh, all of us here are super proud to have been a part of that. Did you? That's great. It's going to be great. All right, everybody. <laughs> Believe the Hope is the podcast. Make sure you check it out on all of your streaming platforms. Um, Get plugged in with Paul. We love to support people that have a passion and a big vision to change the world. And listen, hey, if that's you, be sure to reach out to any of us. We would love to learn about what you're doing and collaborate with you as well. Well, that wraps up this episode of the podcast. We'll be back next week and we'll do it again.